Check the description box below for where you can find me digitally, information about the sound tools I'm using today, and links to my laid-back caged masterclass on truefire.com. Today we're talking about my little five-step advice for creative practice. It's pretty fun, pretty easy. This is honestly, this is what I do, and this is what I tell my students to do. Ready? Step one, pick a key. Pick a key, any key, okay, E minor. Hmm. Now, assuming you know the key of E minor, I have a whole series of um, music theory for guitar players. You know, you could pick any progression you want from E minor. You could make up your own. You could do a one, four, one, five. You could do any number of, I'm gonna actually do an eight bar blues because it's a form that I've been fascinated with lately. Boom, there it is. Eight bar blues goes E minor, two, three, four, B minor, two, three, um, A, yeah, wait, E minor, did I say E minor? Yeah, E minor, B minor, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, E minor, and then a quick, fascinating, fascinating form. I like blues forms in general, you know, not just, just as a, as a structure to hang ideas upon, so I play around with blueses a lot, and I recommend you do as well. Or not, do whatever you want. Okay, we picked a key, we picked a progression. Next thing I always tell people with, that's step one, step two, step three, pick a groove. Yeah, I have a video called Groove is Our Responsibility, which yeah, nobody likes that title. <laughs> who, who wants to think of things as our responsibility, but, I do think that sure as we know, um, chord progressions, chord progressions and uh, chord progressions, scales and chords, good idea to, to name the grooves that we've learned. Um, I have my own names for them. You can have your own names for them as well. So for this one, it started out as thinking in terms of a, a, a groove I call the backwards beat, or it's kind of a Motown thing where you're popping. I was hybrid picking it, so I'm hybrid picking an E minor seven. By the way, hey, why not? I'll tab it all out. I'll put it up on Patreon for free with the backing track, so you could head on over there and grab that for free if you want. Um, but yeah, I'm grabbing an E minor seven. I think you can see with this camera. slow things down in YouTube too by the way there's an option for that because to me that's my imitation of like the the crack crack flap them flap them bat bat flap them flap them Motown drum beat okay so let's take that up here so this is now three key chord progression groove and then honestly well next next choice we make to test how well we know this instrument is what fretboard location am I going to do this? Am I going to do it in the open position? Am I going to do it in one of the caged structures that I know? You know, so that's the next way to test your knowledge of the instrument. So say I went up here to this cage structure, quote unquote A shape, making a minor seven. So now let's just go, yeah. So. I made these all minor sevens by just pop, popping the pinky off. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two. So there it 
is the basic progression, no fills, no color chords, and then that's the fifth thing. Then I'm like, okay, neat. I've, I've done all those other things. I've thought about all those other things for this little, I, you know, little kernel of an idea I had. Now, what about, what, what, in what ways might I adorn this? Hmm, I don't know. Um, so then it's, it's kind of like you, you choose two paths. You're either going to, right, yeah, put color chords, minor sevens, dominant sevens, nines, elevens, minor elevens, sus four, sus two, any of those, you might do that. Or you could be like fills, which, hey, you, hello, hi, I'm Eric Haugen. I'm going to say put pentatonic fills in there. So let's see what I chose to do. I actually, let's see, on the first one, didn't do much. I put a chromatic passing chord in there that time. Going down to that A minor for that. So you could call that a color chord. And then I did this. I'm playing a Telecaster. I love Andy Summers. Yeah, so on that A minor, because it's hanging on it for two bars, I'm like, I can get my pinky out to get that ninth fret. Nines, five, five. Again, thumb's got to be upright. Notice I had to pull my shoulder down. If your hand is like this, good luck. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get it. I might put a sus four on that sometimes when I come back around to that E minor seven. Changes fast. And then put in, you know, on that that pivotal point, that point where the progression is turning around on itself, why not put a fill in there? What'd I do? So that kind of, you know, here's E minor. And I guess that's actually parallel thirds. Nine and eight, seven and seven. And then a little just back and forth on these pentatonic tones. Here comes now that five chord, that B minor, which I elected to that time around, make it into a B7. Because it's a five, you can make that into a, so yeah, there's a color chord now. So I did a fill. Color. Bam, there's the chord that I'm seeing. Uh, eight and 10. And then as it came back around, now I'm on this E minor. Sus four, see that? Sus4, Andy Summers chord again, so such a great chord. And that time I did a blues fill down here, Hey Joe. Right, that's, yeah, that's Hey Joe, that's E minor pentatonic. I'm not going to say the frets, so you can see what I'm doing. Exactly, hey Joe. That's such a Steely Dan chord right there. It's really that's a B7 sharp nine. One, two, three. But just those. And you know, I'm just playing the chords. I think I put that Andy Summers note in. Yeah, there you have it. So to review, you could do this again. It doesn't, you could rant. I almost should, hey, marketing idea. Somebody who makes dice, uh, do you want to make some dice? Like one dice would be the key. One would be the progression. One would be the groove, the fret location, and then fills and color chords. You shake them all up and throw them and see what you get. So again, one, pick a key. G major, C major, A minor, D minor, you know, any key you know. All right, pick a progression. One, four, one, five. Uh, one, six, two, five, you know, one, five, six, four, anything, anything, you know, and again, again, I actually do say like, write it down. Well, I'm not going to lean forward because my mic will go if I lean forward. Yeah. Get a notebook, write stuff down, be like E. Uh, okay. I'll do that progression. All right. Then pick a groove, you know, whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, I picked my Motown groove, the backwards beat, but I have, you know, like a dozen grooves that I keep in my head. Pick a fretboard location that you're going to test whether or not you can execute that progression there. And then once you got all that cooking, that's when you're like, in what way? In what way will I attempt to adorn this thing simply? Be it fills, pentatonic, 
or colors, color chords, passing chords, sevens, sus twos, sus fours, minor sevens, minor elevens, any of those colorful things. Dudes, that's it. That's what I do. Like, that's what I do. <laughs> you try. It's fun. It's fun. Because the idea is that I know that like practice can feel really mechanical and, and kind of just, yeah, like run scales, run chords, run scales, run chords. And this is a way to like, yeah, test. Be like, eh, let me play with some stuff. Anyway, thank you so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do. Patreon, uh, donating, purchasing PDF downloads, booking lessons, purchasing my True Fire course. It's, it's, uh, it's all going really well for me. Thanks. And so it's not lost on me. You on the other side of this camera, I, well, I don't see you, but I sort of see you. Hi. Thank you. You're making my life cool and I appreciate it. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza.